Kiwis who have been kicked out of Australia under controversial deportation laws say the government here hasn't backed its strong words with actions. This comes ahead of Jacinda Ardern's visit to Australia later this week, where she's meeting with her counterpart, Scott Morrison. In the government's first year of power, senior ministers condemned the huge power the Australian government has when it comes to deporting New Zealanders. But Foreign Minister Winston Peters admitted the issue wasn't even brought up at a bilateral meeting with Australian Foreign Minister Maurice Payne last Friday. So has the situation changed at all for deportees since the Labour-led government took office? Logan Church has the story. Our story starts in the passenger seat of Helen Murphy's car. She works for PARS, which is funded by corrections to help transition offenders back into the community. We're on the road to Christchurch Airport. OK, we're all good to go. It's a familiar route. Helen meets Kiwis who have been deported from Australia. Some are kicked out for good reason, but others not. We get notification of everybody and we head out to the airport, which is kind of what I'm doing at the moment. We head out there. While we drive, here's some background. In 2014, Australia made controversial changes to its Migration Act, in particular Section 501 and 116. Under the new pass of Section 116, a foreigner can be deported if he or she, quote, is or may be a risk to the health, safety or good order of the Australian community. Under Section 501, you can be deported if you are, and again I quote, not of good character. It might suit Aussie politics, and it seems to me that there is a, a venal political strain to all this. Some Aussies obviously like this. But it's not good for those people. It's certainly not consistent with any humanitarian ideals that I thought both countries once shared. That's Justice Minister Andrew Little speaking to the ABC a year ago, condemning Australia's deportation regime. Prior to the 2017 election, the Labour Party promised to challenge Australia over its detention policy, with its deputy Calvin Davis repeatedly lambasting National for failing to stand up to Canberra. And Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern has described Australia's deportation policy as corrosive to the trans-Tasman relationship. Fast forward to today, and around 1,700 New Zealanders have now been deported from Australia, many stepping off the plane with nothing, and in total shock. And we go out to Vodafone, grab a phone, and have it all set up ready for them to go, because one of the first things I like for them to do is phone home to let them know they're they're safe and they've been looked after. Generally they have got an itinerary saying they've got three to five nights in a motel somewhere, paid for by Immigration Australia and they might have some money, destitute money, it can be $50 or up to $250 or nothing depending on um, their circumstances. That motel allowance doesn't last long, and guessing long-term accommodation can be tricky. Because they only come with um, a passport, gee, I'm going to have to go over here, a passport of three months, um, now the, the real estate people have become aware that a passport of three months means there's something, well, they think, a little bit dodgy about them. And that's just the practical challenges. The emotional challenges come later. All in all, it, it's, it's, everything is made to make them feel that they don't have a lot of control of their life at that point. One of the first deportees Helen picked up from the airport after the law changes was Dion Murphy. No relation. Speaking to Checkpoint, Dion is open about his criminal past in Australia. When I was about 17, I was hanging around wrong people and stuff like that and got done for breaking into stealing. Um, then after that I got a common assault charge, um, then if, quite a few years later I ended up with an attempted murder charge. Um, it was from long history of domestic violence at home and um, the gentleman that did it, I ended up stabbing him um, one night while I was intoxicated and that. So. And you served time? Yeah, I served three and a half years of a nine-year sentence. That was in the late 90s. Dion did his time and left prison in 2001. He rebuilt his life and had a family. But 14 years later, it all came crashing down. He found himself in a detention centre in Sydney, 
which he describes as a glorified jail. And then he was deported. It was the 30th of July 2015. I um, arrived here at about 20 to 11 at night. Did you have any preparations or any plans coming to New Zealand? Or was it quite literally, here's your plane ticket, get on, goodbye? Yeah, free plane tickets, see you later, have fun. Since then, Dion has rebuilt his life again. He's got a new partner and says he's kept on the right side of the law. But many don't handle the transition so well. Figures released to checkpoints this year showed more than 40% of the 1,690 deportees sent back to New Zealand since 2015 had been subsequently charged with a crime here. And even for those who do keep their noses clean, it's not an easy road. Dion can't go back and see his family. Um, I have four grandkids. Um, yeah, uh, um, two of the grandkids I've never met, um, which is quite hard for me. And um, as well as that, like I have my parents in Australia, brothers and sisters. Crystal Broadalow's son is at the other end of the deportation process. He is currently in an immigration centre in Brisbane and doesn't want to be identified for fear it might harm his case. Speaking from the Gold Coast, Ms Broadlow told us that as a kid he suffered from PTSD after seeing his best friend shot dead, his family home destroyed by a storm and a woman being crushed by a car outside school. She says his methods for coping with this as an adult led him into trouble. The trauma was too much for him to deal with and he ended up smoking pot um, for a couple of years and then ended up using ice um, to block out the trauma that he was experiencing every single day. And ice led to crime, just little things, you know, ended up becoming bigger things like stealing. But it got worse. He had six charges against him. Um, he had a, a device, I, I think it's called a bong or something like that, in the car and he had a little bit of uh, marijuana on him. Um, he also had a handmade um, gun and some bullets and he was pulled over by the police at night time. Um, he got charged for that and that having that weapon comes with a 12-month mandatory sentence. Crystal makes no excuse for her son's actions and believes he should be held accountable for his crimes. But he has now served his time behind bars and was trying to improve his life, including attending counsellor sessions and group therapy but he is now being held at Brisbane Immigration Transit Accommodation. His visa has been cancelled under Section 116 and faces being shipped back to New Zealand where he has no immediate family or support and he would leave his partner and child behind. They have a two-year-old son who is Australian-born and he's an Australian citizen and again for him to be sent back to New Zealand and not be a part of his son and his partner's life is it's very stressful. Ahead of the election, Crystal was optimistic a Labour-led government would push hard for that policy to be changed. You know, for, for New Zealand citizens living in Australia, it was actually really great to have somebody like the Labour Party care and be vocal leading up to the elections. And since the election, you know, has been won and Labour is in power, they have come over here and had meetings with the Australian government. But it's, it's gone nowhere. We have really no one to represent us. We are really looking towards the New Zealand government to, to step up and represent on a much more stronger level. So what does the government say about this? What you've heard earlier from Andrew Little is just some of the many public statements he and other government ministers have made in their first year or so in power. Here's Winston Peters also speaking to the ABC last July. The reality is, we want New Zealanders to get the same treatment an Aussie would get if they were being charged with an offence. That is a trial before you're booted offshore. And more importantly, not being told that you can appeal from offshore back to Australia. Uh, I mean, who can afford that? Look at the legal costs and everything that's involved. We just want a bit more fairness and we want the Aussies to behave the way we think Aussies ordinary do behave. Andrew Little also met with Home Affairs Minister Peter Dutton at a security conference last August to discuss his concerns. It was also talked about in February this year, in a meeting between the New Zealand and Australian Prime Ministers. But what has come out of these discussions? It wasn't even brought up in a meeting between Foreign Minister Winston Peters and his Australian equivalent Maurice Payne just last Friday. 
even though Mr Peters said the government hadn't given up. No, we haven't given up. But, I mean, the point is that we have to begin on the basis that Australia has got, as we have, every right to write its own domestic policy. That said, of course we're going to keep on focusing to get a, a far better understanding and what we would believe is a far fairer legal outcome, particularly when people arrived in Australia when they were three, four, five, six or seven years of age. If they're arriving at 18, 19 years of age, it's a different story. So, uh, yes, we're going to keep that dialogue up, but sometimes there's, there are a whole lot of other subjects that have to be discussed, and we had quite a long discussion. Jacinda Ardern will visit Australia later this week, where she'll meet with Prime Minister Scott Morrison. It's not known if this issue will be brought up. In the meantime, many Aussie-based New Zealanders will live wondering if or when Australian immigration will knock on their door. For Checkpoint, Logan Church. We did want to find out from the government what action is or will be taken. We approached our Justice Minister Andrew Little to comment as part of that story from Logan, but he declined.